Hey guys, just wanted to step in here really quick and kind of have a little chat with you guys before the video starts. We've been watching the news, and I'm sure many of you guys have been watching the news, and we just wanted to say that we are deeply saddened by everything that we're seeing as far as the injustices to the black community. Like, this is... everything that's been going on has been terrible. It's definitely been um, heartbreaking to, to watch these things happen in real time on the news, and um, I know that you guys you guys probably do know that we try to keep the channel um, generally a positive, lighthearted place, a place where you can escape the real world. Um, but we just felt like we we couldn't be silent about this. Right. Um, but we also realized that it's not our place to speak right now. Um, we need to be listening and we need to be understanding of what's going on. Um, and we also just want the black community especially to know that we we hear you and um, we stand with you. So what we've decided to do is at the end of our videos we normally have an outro and that outro just doesn't feel right at this point in time. So for the time being we're going to change it up a little bit. So during our outro we're going to try to highlight some organizations that need a little bit of a signal boost and hopefully get a little bit more of the word out there. So we hope that you guys will take a look at the organization um, that we'll be talking about at the end of the video and I'll leave it in the description box down below. Um, if you can't donate, we understand that this is, you know, we're in a time of pandemic and we understand that not everybody is financially stable enough to donate right now. But even if you can just get the word out about the organization or if you can just talk to your friends and family about it, um, that, that also helps. And so we just wanna say thank you in advance for, for checking that out. And um, yeah, I guess uh, here's, and here's today's vlog. Good good morning from a historic day for a homothy vlog word the second third and fourth Oh, all of them are here. It's like a family occasion. <laughs> okay, so today is Supposedly possibly the first day where we are going to launch humans from the United States into space since since the space shuttle program Yeah, so I'm wearing a shirt in in honor of the occasion. There's Mickey as a spaceman Oh, I'm I'm not. Oh, that's I didn't a, know. I didn't know we were wearing space clothes. I'm wearing a space clothes. Oh. Um, also, the Disney-owned stores at Disney Springs open today. What they're doing is they're enacting a return type system where you give them your phone number and your name, and they'll text you when it's your time to come into the store and go shopping, in order to keep the number of people in the store down. When I looked on Twitter, the people that were there were saying that it was a three-hour wait just to give them your phone number to then go shopping later in the day. Here's what I don't get. Every morning I put away the dishes from the night before because we've been doing these, um, the subscription mailbox meals from Marley's Food and they use so many dishes. If you saw the video yesterday, then you saw how many dishes that we used. So I have to put away dishes every morning, but um, so that's what I'm doing. But uh, can't you just shop online? Uh, eBay resellers. So what does that mean? You can't shop online anymore? I think it's faster if they go to the store and then they can... Oh, the eBay resellers are the ones that are waiting to get yeah. to the store. But do they not have like a... Like, well, you can only buy like three of these... Ten. Ten's usually the limit. Ten? Yeah. Why would you need to buy ten though? To sell them. I know, but why doesn't Disney understand like, hey, these people are just selling them or they don't care? They're making money. Disney's selling them. They're selling the same amount that they would be selling otherwise. They're just selling them quicker. I just find that to be so weird. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. I mean, yeah. I think that they should not do that. I think the most that you should do is three. I feel like even three seems like a lot. Well, like you're like man buying some for presents, buying some for friends and family. That's true, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I, wow, 10, that's a lot. That's just my opinion. It could just be people that are excited to go shopping. Well, I imagine I don't know. that like half the line is eBay people and half the line is actual just excited shoppers. I think it's probably more along the lines of like seven eighths eBay shoppers and like an eighth <laughs> People excited. You think? Yeah. By the way, it's raining outside right now. Oh, because there is a named tropical storm on the coast of South, South Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, Bertha. I just can't believe that we already have like a hurricane that's We've coming. already had two named storms this season. What was the name of the first one? Because I don't even remember that. I don't I want to say Agatha. <laughs> no, it's got to be a male name. Oh, yeah. Andy? I feel like they already had, when they have a catastrophic storm, they don't use the name again. Right. Because they had Andrew that hit... Miami back in like 1992 or 1993. That's a good question. Because they used Andrew and they like 
got Andrews off the list, yeah. can they not use Andy? I mean, I would think they wouldn't use Andy. I don't know. What do you guys think? Anthony? Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Um, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> what would another one be? I don't know anymore. Uh, Ace. 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 Hurricane Ace. Hurricane Ace. There was one other thing that I wanted to talk about. What? Right now. I don't remember. I don't remember either. Oh no. Um. That's what happens when it's morning time and you're a new parent. That's quarantine, baby. Oh, but also, the baby actually slept kind of okay last night. Pretty good. I, yeah. I, so, I think what we were doing was we were trying to get him to go through too many weaning processes at once. Yeah. So I was trying to get him to sleep, like fall asleep on his own, trying to wean him out of the swaddle, and I was trying to wean him off the moving snoo. Right, and he's, so, like, he's like, Dad, let's just do one at a time. Please. Yeah, so I put him back in the swaddle, and I put him back in the moving aspect of the snoo. Yeah. Now I'm just trying to get him to fall asleep on his own. <laughs> and once he does that, then we'll... We'll tackle the other issues. Yeah, I stop, think the, that, stop the snoo. Yeah. I will say though that he is almost too big for the snoo. And so right. the snoo is our like motorized bassinet. I just, I know I say that every time we talk about it, but just in case somebody has no idea what a snoo is and they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. The snoo is great. I do think that we set ourselves up for failure using the snoo though. I think we set ourselves up for failure using the snoo and not starting the weaning process earlier. Like way sooner. Yeah. And then also I think he's just too tall for the snoo or he's becoming very close to being too tall for the snoo. Yeah. And I think we also set ourselves up for failure using the carrier to get him to go to sleep. It was just like really easy to do that. I think that you just really learn as you go with being a new parent. And I know you guys know that if you are new parents or have children, you even told us that in the comments, like you just, every day is a learning process. Yeah. And that is so true. So we definitely learned things not to do in the future. Well, I guess we're not going to be teaching another, I don't know. If this happens again, if we have more children, we know what not to do. Right. But I wish we knew what we know now. I wish before that I knew what I know now. When, when I was younger. younger. Oh, I, I also did want to mention that even though I'm wearing the shirt and we're hoping for a launch today, not looking good. There's rain outside. There's a hard, like tropical storm up in South Carolina. There's rain off the coast. We have until four o'clock today to like know whether or not there's going to be a launch. But. But. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen today. I love his noises. <laughs> he just, he really wants to talk to us. He's like, I'm trying to tell you something. No, he's like, Dad, your butt's like right in my face right now. No. <laughs> Did we mention that there's a task force meeting happening right now about what, like when SeaWorld and Disney are gonna open? I don't know if we mentioned that, but that's happening right now. And we'll like, but we'll give you the breaking news as soon as we find out what's going on. Well, it'll be the next day. Well, the next day. Because you're but watching like, the video tomorrow. Yeah, but for us, it's breaking. Right. It'll be exciting. You want to show them what your favorite thing is? My favorite thing in the entire world? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jackson loves to hug his daddy's arm. Are you hugging your daddy? Are we holding hands? Are you hugging daddy? Show everybody how much you love to hug daddy. Oh. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and then my other favorite thing is when he's like relaxed and like falling asleep and you put your hand on his chest, he'll like take his little tiny hands and like... <laughs> you'll like rub your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he's a little sweet boy, huh? Yeah, that baby. And then he yanks my beard hair out. <gasps> no. He loves me. What the heck, buddy? He's got on his new outfit. So we got some nine month. These are the nine month ones, Six right? Six to nine, yeah. This little buddy, he's a big boy. Yeah, right? He's wearing six to nine month old clothing. Yeah. And like, it's not that big on him. No, it's the right length too. Like he's just very tall. Yeah. So. And people were asking how his little like neck rash is doing now that we've been putting him in bibs and putting the diaper cream underneath. It's doing good. Yeah, it's almost all the way gone. Yeah, it did take a lot, like a lot of the reviews online that were like, just put diaper cream on it. We're like, it was gone the next day. That didn't exactly happen. Yeah. It's like the majority of it. It looks a lot better the next day. Yeah. But like, it's still like a little bit there. But the bib helped a ton because we're able to kind of catch some of the drool before it gets to his little neck. Yeah. Right, buddy? Are you hugging your dad? Oh, my baby. Little baby Jack. <gasps> that little buddy. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, grab that daddy skin. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when you grabbed mommy's eye yesterday? Yeah. That was funny. Oh no. <laughs> I'm currently listening to the presentation right now. We just found out that SeaWorld is going to be opening June 11th. Face coverings required. Plexiglass places that you can't have social distancing, but physical distancing markings throughout the park. Hand sanitizer everywhere. One way in, one way out for retail shops. It's gonna be interesting. So I watched the live stream of the announcements uh, from Disney and SeaWorld, and we actually made an entire video about the announcement yesterday, and we'll put a link to that in the description down below, but we're still waiting on the rocket launch today. Not looking good. I don't know if you guys can tell from the overall lighting in the kitchen, it kind of looks like it's nighttime. It's not, it's 12.30 in the afternoon. It is just very stormy outside. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is dark and windy. I don't think it's going to be uh, optimal for a rocket launch today. Came out in the backyard to show you guys the storm. It has just started raining. So Jackson, are you enjoying the rain? Are you feeling some little rains on your head? It's like barely sprinkling, but... Yeah. There's the storm. Oh yeah, it's starting to really rain now. We're going in. Alright, time to go in. So the time has come. We have received our spicy bird food. Sizzling heat. That sounds like... Uh, very spicy. It says squirrels taste the heat, but birds don't. So apparently the squirrels are going to hate it and the birds are going to love it. So let's go fill up our bird feeder and see what happens. Honestly, just smells like delicious trail mix. We'll see. We'll see if the squirrels hate it. It doesn't smell very spicy. Oh, the birds have started to return to the bird feeder. No squirrels yet, but the birds are back. So, so far the blue jays seem to really like the bird food. I've seen some cardinals come up seen a woodpecker come up. Uh, the doves are kind of like on the ground underneath it, picking up whatever the blue jays drop. I feel like I saw one of those house finches too, but I haven't gotten like a good look at one. So I think the birds are uh, back in town. The birds are back in town. Well, well, I was gonna show you guys the bird feeder, but can't see out the window because it's raining so hard out there. We are officially in summer storm season. Ooh. That's pretty intense. Okay, so yesterday we put up this video explaining the new rules that are gonna be in place at Disney. And a, a main topic of conversation has been masks. And a lot of people are bringing up the fact that they're like, I don't think that I could wear a mask in the 90 degree heat. And I don't think that that's gonna be the biggest issue. I think these storms, these summer storms are gonna be the biggest issue. Cause if you don't have an umbrella, you don't have a poncho and you're wearing a mask and then it starts raining and your mask gets soaked. I feel like that's gonna be a lot harder to breathe through and like you're just gonna take it off at that point because you can't breathe or if you have a, one of the paper like surgical masks that are gonna fall apart or the cotton masks are gonna get soaked so what do you do in that situation these are the questions that i have so speaking of face coverings this is what i got this is a neck gaiter i got a bunch of them these should be a lot cooler in the like summer weather because they're like quick drying now i should say that the like, neck gaiters like quick drying fabric doesn't block as much of the particulates in the air so you are like re losing a little bit of the mask's ability by using the quick drying material. But these have a little pocket for these little uh, filters. These are PM 2.5 filters. And I think that that means that they block down to 2.5 nanometers and the virus is three nanometers. And there are some areas around the outside of the filter where things can get in because it's not a full seal, but I do feel better about it. I feel better about this than I do about like a cotton mask. And this is, very easy to breathe through and feels good. And right now it's a little bit wet because it just came out of the washing machine and it's cooling me off. It's very nice. I can smell my breath though. So science is fun. Uh, after I said that statement about the filters and N95 masks and blocking the virus and stuff like that, I had to look it up because I was like, am I right about that? And I was not right about it, but PM particulate matter 2.5 is the rating that an N95 mask has which is interesting, so that's what these filters are. They're basically little pieces of N95 mask. What does that mean? N95 masks filter out particular matter down to 2.5 size. I don't know, it's just like a random sizing thing that they say, uh, which is much larger than the virus. The virus is extremely tiny and can actually fit through the mask, but when they were doing research on these masks, they found that N95 masks block 95% of viruses. So that's like a, a huge, fantastic number. 
And so that's the same thing that we're getting out of this 2.5. Although it does have the sides open, so it's not as good as an, as an N95, but it's still better than just a cloth face mask. So, I don't know, interesting facts that I just found out. Oh, another fun fact that I just found is the little paper, paper surgical masks that I've been wearing. They did the research on those too in this same article that I just read, and they said that those block 90% of viruses. That's a good number. Ooh, this is the first time seeing a squirrel in the bird feeder. Let's see how he likes it. Oh, not sticking around, are you? Are you gonna try again? He's leaving. Sorry, Jackson is having a good time in the other room. Interesting. <laughs> <gasps> Who's that? What is that buddy doing? Who's that? Oh no, you don't like your jingle ball anymore? So we have this thing called a Mamaru. He hates it though, and it was this like super expensive baby toy. It's uh, like a rocker. Yeah. But, or a swing. And it was this thing that we were like, oh, we have to get it. He hates it, but he loves those balls that came with it. What are you doing? So, what do you think? Whoa, where did it go? Oh no, you distracted? Oh no, I wanted to show him laughing, but he just keeps looking at the camera. What if I do this? <laughs> Is that so funny? <laughs> Who's that baby? Whoa, what happened to your ball? <laughs> wow, that buddy, yeah. <laughs> so we just got a little bit of like more expanded news about the Disney news, like with their new openings and stuff. We found out that they said, in quoting here, in order to foster physical distancing during this time, upon reopening, our offerings, restaurants, and other experiences such as behind the scenes tours will be limited in capacity and other experiences may remain closed. As a result of limited capacity, we have made the difficult decision to cancel all existing dining reservations and experience bookings, including Disney dining plans included in packages. We will reopen dining and experience bookings with more limited numbers closer to when the parks reopen. We will also shift from a 180 day booking window to a 60 day booking window for dining and experience bookings going forward to allow guests to make their plans closer to their visits. So even if you're staying in a resort, you cannot make reservations 180 days out. And I bet you're wondering about fast passes then. So they also said, as a result of the COVID-19 impact, the FastPass Plus service will be suspended for the time being as we plan to use additional queue space to manage capacity at our attractions and maintain physical distancing. We will automatically cancel existing FastPass Plus selections and share any future updates on the service at a later date. Also, please note that upon reopening, extra magic hours will be temporarily suspended. So there you go. That's a... Uh, some kind of some big news from Disney, like no more fast pass, no more 180 days out, no more dining plan for the time being. No reser you could do all your reservations have been canceled. You'll have to remake them coming up here once they reopen the reservation system. A lot of changes. Well. What do you think about it, Jackson? What do you think about that? Well now you, you know, know how, how I feel. feel. Saying you can handle my love. Are you for real? Are you for real? No, don't go wasting my precious time. Time. Get your act together and we'll be just fine. Now, here's the story from A to Z. You want to get with me, you better listen carefully. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to eat your hand. How about that? Yeah, yummy baby. <gasps> Is this your favorite toy? Is this baby's favorite toy? <laughs> so close. You almost had it. And to cap it off, he planned to set up a huge Christmas tree in the center of the city. <gasps> we'll have a special tree lighting ceremony on Christmas Eve, he told his team. 
So while you guys are reading a five minute Christmas story, which one? It's Christmas. Well, which one are you reading? Uh, what was it called? Christmas in Monstropolis. Whoa, this buddy's gonna have a little Monsters in Christmas. With a camera crew there to broadcast the event live. <laughs> Sully nervously looked over Mike's plans. This is going to take a lot of laugh power, Mikey. He said, I'm not sure, but Mike was determined. So while you oh. guys do that, I'm gonna go make lunch really quick. Cause I read him two stories earlier. We read the 101 Dalmatians Snow Dogs Christmas story and the um, Alice in Wonderland, they lost the queen's Christmas present Christmas story. Oh no. Yeah, he's gonna get a full dose of Christmas today. So update on the bird feeder. I think that the birds like it. I think we'll have to really wait until tomorrow morning when like the word gets out in the bird community like, hey, food's back. <laughs> and I've only seen one squirrel attempt to eat it and he just like kind of sniffed it and went away. So yeah. I think that's good. I think so. Yeah. I think we, we found a, a squirrel hack. So to celebrate, we're gonna make some strawberry shortcake. We found this recipe on Sally's Baking Addiction website and- Sally? She's, I feel like she's good. Okay. I like the website. All right. And this recipe got a lot of five-star reviews. All of the comments were like, this is the best recipe I've ever made in my whole life. This is my favorite stra strawberry shortcake that I've ever made. There's some Sally stands out there. There really are. So um, I'm excited to make it. It looks fairly easy. We have everything to make it, so. Let's, and no like substitutions this time. No, yeah, we're doing it exactly how Sally says to do it. I, I don't want to mess up. We got to do the cooking by the book. <laughs> or else you will be lazy. Hey. I don't know the rest or of it. Or else it comes out crazy. Oh, there you go. Oh, the TikTok thing. So in the last home vlog, we talked about this TikTok, like cleaning the strawberries thing. And a lot of you guys were like, I didn't know you had a TikTok. We don't have a TikTok, but we looked at TikTok. Right. So we're gonna try this strawberry thing and see what happens. Hopefully it's not too gross. Yeah. I don't know, I'm kind of nervous. By the way, this doesn't have anything to do with this TikTok, but I watched a lot of the Washington Times, Washington Post mm -hmm. TikToks. Very funny. Yeah. That guy's a very funny guy. This TikTok was not funny. No. But it was, I think it's gonna be interesting. So let's do that first. All right. I'm gonna try to say it in the exact same tone that the TikTok said it. Oh, so the way that TikTok works is that you are lip syncing somebody else's like words. It's not even a song. It's literally somebody else's. Sometimes. Well, sometimes it is a song, yeah, but. Well, no, I mean like sometimes it's just your own original words too. But did you see how that one, she was just yeah, was somebody else's. Somebody else's TikTok that she was doing a video over top of. Yeah. So first we gotta get some water and some salt. So apparently if you wash your strawberries in water and salt, all kinds of little bugs pop out. <laughs> that was the TikTok. That was it, yeah. So we're um, gonna do it. We're gonna give it a try. And now the one thing that we couldn't figure out while we were looking at these TikToks is... Do you think that's enough or more? Eh, probably, yeah, that's good right there. Mm -hmm. Is like, how much salt? They poured kind of a lot of salt in. Yeah. Let's see. Salt, salt, salt. You think that's enough? Mm, yeah, why not? Yeah, that's probably good. You think? I mean, it's not, not stirred, but it's probably enough salt. Yeah. All right, let's dump these strawberries in there. All right, I'm nervous. Do you think it's gonna be gross? No, our strawberries are pretty darn ripe. They are super ripe. Ooh, who's going to the strawberry spa? <laughs> or a seed already popped off. Ooh. It's exciting. I don't wanna see bugs come out. I'm kind of nervous. I do. Do you? Yeah, bugs are fun. All right, so these strawberries have been sitting for, I mean, a little bit, and I'm not seeing anything. Do you see anything? No, not really. And we didn't even rinse these off, like if they're, we just put them right in the salt water, so it's not like, I don't know if there was stuff, we didn't get rid of it, you know what I mean? By like rinsing it? Yeah. Is that a bug? I don't know, what's that? Uh oh. I don't know, that's a seed. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't have any legs. No, I mean, I honestly like, I guess it doesn't work for everybody. Oh, wait, maybe. what's this? I don't even know if I can get the camera to focus on it, but like, yeah, do you see that little like white thing right there? Maybe it's that is a bug. A, is it not just like a little hair? I don't know. Look at it with your eyeball. With my special eye. Well, I will say this. Even though the camera couldn't focus on what was on the spoon, if it was a bug, it was an extremely small bug. So I think that we, for us, the TikTok like viral strawberry cleaning thing was a fail. Myth busted. So while I'm cutting the strawberries, we were making buttermilk biscuits that yeah. are gonna be underneath the, that's what the base of the strawberry shortcake is. But we didn't, we're making sweet buttermilk biscuits, which is, should be pretty delicious, I think. Yeah. But also we didn't buy buttermilk. 
because in the recipe, Sally said we could make our own buttermilk by adding lemon juice to milk. And then that will turn, I guess it's acidic enough that it like turns the milk. Turns yeah, it'll it, curdle it. Yeah, so it turns into buttermilk. So she said to take lemon, lemon juice, fresh lemon juice. So we have a fresh lemon. I'm going to, I cut it. I'm just gonna put the lemon juice in this little container here. I only need a teaspoon because we're cutting this recipe in half. And one thing that I definitely recommend is cutting the bottom off of your, whatever fruit you're trying to juice. And then also scoring the actual like skin of the fruit because that'll help just to get as much juice as possible. So while you're finishing up cutting up the strawberries, which I think we're gonna have enough strawberries. So we needed three cups of the chopped strawberries because we are having the recipe because this recipe actually makes like 10 to 12 servings and I figured we didn't need that much strawberry shortcake because I'm not sure how it really keeps in the fridge, you know? I know that so, the whipped, because we're gonna make fresh whipped cream and fresh whipped cream doesn't stay. Okay. It like falls. Oh, okay, yeah, so we're just gonna make enough for, probably still too much for us, but won't be, at least it won't be 10 servings, you know what I mean? Right. So now I'm getting the dry ingredients together. I'm gonna wait on making my buttermilk, but I'll show you that as soon as I do make it, because it needs to sit for five minutes, but we don't know if it sits for longer than five minutes, what will happen. So right now, I'm just getting together my dry ingredients. This is a cup and a half of flour. We're gonna add an eighth of a cup of granulated sugar. Then we'll add half a teaspoon of salt. And our last dry ingredient is a tablespoon of baking powder. And it did say, like, yes, a tablespoon. That's gonna be a lot, or it seems like a lot, but that's the right amount. So that's that's all of our dry ingredients. Let's cut in our cold butter. I don't know how to do that. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. All right, so before we do that though, we need to get our strawberries like marinating. Oh, no. no, no, no. <laughs> there it goes. And then we just add a, an eighth of a cup of sugar. And then we wanna let this sit until we need them, which is gonna be in, well, it's gonna be a little bit until we need them. That'll give them enough time to like release their juices, become nice and like syrupy. And it'll be that, um, like strawberry topping, you know, that you find up for like sundaes and stuff like that. So I'm excited to see how delicious these will be in like 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, you can like hear the sugar moving around in there. That's yeah. the good stuff. A little lot of sugar. Or it sounds like a lot of sugar. I guess it wasn't that much sugar, but you can see it's already getting kind of like syrupy and like kind of juicy. So we'll let these sit and marinate and become more delicious. All right, so now that we have our strawberry mixture kind of setting off to the side, now we are going to add our cold butter into our dry ingredients for the biscuits. Yeah, we're gonna cut it in, so we're gonna just use a food processor. We just have this little tiny food processor. Oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna try. But also they said you could use one of those like slicer things, which we don't have. Slicer things? Yeah, you know that like it's like a, it look, it's like a D shape and it's like three slicers and you use that to cut. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What got on so, this camera? What? Oh, I don't know. Is that salt water? I feel like that's from the baby. <gasps> yeah, I think it is. Okay, so let's do it. So we cut the butter up into small pieces. Hopefully they're small enough, right? Yeah, I think they'll be okay. They'll okay. break apart once we get it moving. You ready? Yeah. <gasps> is it working? I think so. Okay. I mean, it did something. Let's see here. Okay, so it seems like all the butter kind of stuck to the bottom because I do think we had too much stuff in the food processor because it's such a tiny like little container. Yeah. So now I think we can kind of cut it in in the bowl. Hopefully that didn't like ruin the uh, consistency of the flour. You know how you can like over mix flour? Oh yeah. I don't know. It's okay if it's not perfect. I think yeah. it'll I think it'll still be all right. I mean, I think this is it. Great. Right, well, let's add in. Oh, I forgot to make the buttermilk. Oh, we can make it right now. Okay, we'll do that right now. This is a teaspoon of lemon juice, and then I'm just gonna add in enough milk to go up to the half a cup line, which is right there. All right, so then we just mix this together and then let it sit for five minutes. And boom, buttermilk. Yeah, and then it should hopefully turn into buttermilk. Interesting. Would you just taste it? Yeah. What does it taste like? Lemony milk? It doesn't really taste different. Oh. Is that weird? No, I don't think so. Maybe it'll taste different in five minutes. We'll see. So now we got to add our buttermilk to that mixture. And I think it worked. I mean, it looks a different color for sure. It smells soured. Okay. So we're going to pour it on top of our dough. I don't know if it's dough yet. I would say our dry ingredients. Well, or I guess you know, no, because it has butter in it. The buttery stuff. Yeah. And then we're going to gently work it in, but not overwork it. it says till almost combined. I'll say it'll be, uh, what did she say? It'll be shreds. Shreddy. I don't know what that means. Like what, what is? 
You'll see it. So now we're gonna put it onto our work surface and mold it into a ball. And then we need to flatten it to half an inch thick and cut it into our circular shapes. Make our biscuits. Now it's time to make the biscuits. Oh, we're like a cat. Yeah. We're making biscuits. All right, we have our dough flattened. We don't actually have a biscuit cutter, like a, like a cookie cutter, like a circular thing. So we're using a cup. And it should work just fine. Yeah, it One. needs to be three inches in diameter. One thing she said though is not to. Whoa. Oh no. It like sealed because the She's, bottom's not open. She said not to twist it when you're when you're like making your shapes because when you twist it, it seals off the edges and that makes your dough not rise as much. Whoa. That's pretty interesting because it's like making a seal around the cup. So we're putting our biscuits on our lined baking sheet. We lined it with parchment paper. He is getting one more out of this, I think. I Maybe think I might two. Get two. Yeah. I might get three. And then you want to put your biscuits next to each other so they're touching. Because Sally said that when the biscuits are touching that they actually will rise higher. So who knew? Sally's teaching me all kinds of stuff. Sally. So now we're going to brush the top of these with heavy cream. Oh yes. And so I guess this just makes them shiny? Like, well, but then it? you add sugar. It's what makes the sugar stick, right? Oh, is that what it is? Okay, and then is this like enough or how? It doesn't say how much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're good. Okay. It's just enough to make the sugar sticky. I think these are going to be really good. I mean, they look really good. Yeah, you did such a good job. I mean, I only did part of it. You did most it of it. It was teamwork. We're supposed to sprinkle the top of these with coarse sugar, and we don't have any coarse sugar. So I'm just going to use... The granulated sugar that we have, do you think yeah. that would be okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where do you get coarse sugar? It, you know, like rock sugar, where it's like a little oh. bit thicker. Yeah, but like, where do you get that? The store. Oh. It's kind of like the same thing as kosher salt. Except for sugar. Yeah, just like thick, thick boy sugar. Oh, it's for cakes. That's true. Yeah, All no, right. this is gonna be perfect. All right, so now we put them in the oven. So we've already preheated our oven to 425, and we're gonna put these in for. 15 minutes, but we need to keep an eye on them because they could cook less time, it said. Oh, so should I do it for 14? Yeah, let's do it for 14. We'll look at it. Okay. <gasps> Ooh, it's exciting. We're baking biscuits. Yeah, it, we're almost done. Yeah, All we have to do- make some whipped cream. Well, and we have to wait for those to cool. So maybe we'll make the whipped cream while the biscuits are cooling. Little baby Jackson just woke up from his nap. <laughs> I always like it when he just wakes up because he's like- He's just so sweet looking, buddy. Can you give I'm, mommy a big smile? I make him give me a big hug first though. He loves to hug his dad. You love your dad so much, huh? <gasps> oh, are you still so tired, my bud? Did he just yawn? Yeah, he did. All right. Well, he had a good two hour long nap. You did Ooh, really good. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hour long naps. Whoa. That little buddy, you we, were so tired. We've been trying to get him to go into the crib and he's been doing pretty good sleeping in the crib like four naps. This time he wasn't in the crib, he was back in his bassinet because, uh, I don't know, I wanted to give him a, like a good lengthy nap because his He was first very two tired, naps, yeah. Yeah, his first two naps were not as long. We could tell that he was needing a little bit more sleep. <laughs> so while we wait for our biscuits to cook, I think I'm gonna feed this little bud and then I cleaned up the work area a little bit so that we can start our, what is it? Whipped, Whipped cream. cream, yes. My goodness, those look so good, wow. So we gotta let these cool for 10 minutes before trying to assemble anything. And then we're gonna make the whipped cream too. What is this little buddy Jackson doing? He's not eating his dinner. <gasps> you don't want any avocados? He had like a couple of really big bites, so. Yeah, well, that was good enough for you? <laughs> okay. He has that avocado energy. <laughs> it's true, every time he eats avocado, he like hulks out and goes crazy. You don't want any more here. What's up with that? <laughs> I know, that's what I said. You gonna throw that avocado at mommy? No. You gonna eat, eat it? You gonna eat it? <gasps> so close. Oh, he's like, just kidding. You did it so close. There it is. <gasps> Buddy, you did so good. You did so good. I feel like the avocado is the easiest for him oh, to no. eat because it's so smushy. Yeah. But it's also the hardest for him to like pick up because it like sticks to the, I even have a hard time getting it up off this tray. Oh no. Well, you're trying and that's all that we can ask, right? There you go. Yum, yeah, play with your food. So yeah, all you guys you are, do? he's like, I don't know. I got a whole handfuls. Got both hands full. And I uh, dropped them both. Uh-oh. So while you guys are doing that, 
And while we're waiting for the biscuits, which are over here to cool down, I am making dinner. So I'm cooking up some ground beef. I'm gonna add some Velveeta cheese to that when it's done. And then we're just gonna put it in some hot dog buns. I know this sounds crazy. It's gonna be almost like a, like a loose cheeseburger in a hot dog bun. So like a loose cheeseburger sub, like a hoagie. I don't wanna call it a hoagie because I think people might get mad because we're not using hoagie rolls, but like, you know what I mean? That That's kind of the idea. And then I'm gonna put some little chopped dill pickles in there and that's gonna be dinner with some sides. We're gonna do some, some veggies and stuff. And this is just something super easy, really quick. And, and that's, I just wanted something really easy and quick and like comfort food almost. Like a cheeseburger, but not a cheeseburger. So I'll show you when we're done. So now that our meat's cooked, we just add a few cubes of the Velveeta cheese. I think this is maybe like two ounces of Velveeta. I'm gonna put it back on the heat and just kind of stir it up and we'll have some yummy, cheesy, delicious hamburger -y goodness. That's pretty much it. It doesn't look like there's a lot of cheese in there, but there's a lot of cheese in there. And there it is, the final dinner. Got some vegetables, I've already started eating those. And then we've got these things, which are delicious looking. <laughs> oh my goodness. I put our um, refrigerator pickles on them too. So they're like more homemade than just the, you know what I mean? This makes it a little more homemade. Yeah. <laughs> are you watching mommy and daddy eat dinner? <laughs> Say, I just had my dinner and now I'm crazy. Yeah, he's hulking out on avocados. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're done with dinner, but I wanted to show you guys. We're getting the baby ready for bed. We got one of these zippity zip sleep sacks that you guys recommended. We got so many recommendations for this specific kind of sleep sack. So that's what we got. And now we're going to try to put him to sleep in his crib for bedtime tonight. We're trying to slowly move more and more towards the crib. Yeah. So all of his naps during the day were in the crib except for one. And then he starts the night in the crib until he wakes up like wanting milk and then he goes into the bassinet because we're going to bed at that point. Yeah, but what does this little buddy think? I can't tell if he likes it or not. And then once he goes to sleep, we're gonna have our strawberry shortcake. Oh, <laughs> we're looking at the baby in the monitor. Let's see, here he is in his crib. There he is in his little sleep sack. He's camouflaged. I know, you almost can't tell like what's the sleep sack and what's the crib. Now it's time to make the whipped cream. So we're gonna do half a cup of heavy whipped cream, or just heavy cream? You can call it heavy whipping cream. A tablespoon of sugar makes the whipped cream so nice. And a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Wow. Whipped cream. All right, that looks delicious. Now it's time to assemble the shortcake. One strawberry. <laughs> no. Mmm. I wanna try to make almost like a little Strawberry and whipped cream sandwich on the bottom. Oh yeah, I love sandwiches. Yeah, fruit sandwich. Fruit sandwich. Yummy, yummy. yummy. And then you just want to put a little, a little dollop of whipped cream. Oh yeah. And then you're going to put your lid on and kind of smush that out a little bit. More strawberries and more cream. It's hard to get them to stay on top, but it's okay if they fall off the sides. Cause... Well, yeah, you're just gonna eat it. Well, I want it to look pretty though. I know, but like, oh my wow, gosh, there's so the much lightning. The lighting is so crazy right now, you guys. Yeah, it's okay. all hitting the lake. So. Where the, where the, where the <gasps> prosperity pig is. Oh no. He's... You think that's good? Yeah, it looks really good. Look at you. Wow, yeah, it's beautiful. Mm, okay, First gonna... bite. Let's see, I think it's gonna be delicious, but I think the reason why I like strawberry shortcake so much is because it reminds me of our wedding cake. Yeah. It's a really good. Yum. Man, those strawberry shortcakes were delicious. Yeah, we ate everything. All of it. It's a, except for three biscuits. But we ate like all of the strawberries, all of the whipped cream. It was really good. Really good. I'm gonna leave the recipe in the description down below if you guys wanna try it yourselves. It was fairly easy. Yeah. Yeah. But all in all, it was a fantastic day. So as you guys heard in the beginning of the video, we're gonna be changing up our outro for the time being, just to try to give some organizations that might need a signal boost, a little bit of help in these tough times. So with that being said, we are off and we'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to help. So the organization that we're focusing on today is the Black Visions Collective. It is based out of Minnesota and they are focusing their work on transformative justice <laughs> in the state. So we hope that you will take a minute and look at the link that we'll have in the description down below. 
and share it with your friends and family. Um, donate if you can, but we just appreciate you taking a look. So thank you.